Man, it feels like it's been forever since the uh, last time we said this, but good evening, Oakland and beyond. After six plus months, we are finally back at you. Uh, Given that there's a lockout, I don't know how frequently we're going to be coming at you the next couple of months, but hey, we're back. We're coming at you. Finally got some stuff to talk about, Uh, some stuff that you've been expecting since there's kind of been some hiccups trying to get this uh, specific edition off the ground for the last couple of weeks, but... uh, it is what it is. We're here at you finally. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get the long-awaited return of A's Fan Radio underway. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to show number 298, which, of course, is dedicated to Ray Fossey and Mike Neesmith of the Monkees. What's going on, everybody? It is the Legally 5150 Corporal Oaktown coming at you from Dub6 Studios. It's been over a year now. I think we can go ahead and stop calling it the new Dub6 Studios and just call it Dub6 Studios at this point. Located, of course, up in the Eastmont Hills, overlooking the Oakland Coliseum and the rest of the deep east here in Oakland, California. Um, Just wanted to real quickly um, apologize, obviously, for um, going into hiatus in May. As many of you out there may not have been aware of, some of you, of course, are for those that weren't. uh, We kind of had to go into hiatus because my family is still uh, dealing with some fallout, including legal fallout from the uh, murder of my aunt last July. So basically, I had to put my efforts and focus into that. Um, and as I mentioned, we've been trying to come back on and off like the last month, but just stuff came up in regards to that. Other stuff, boss had stuff going on in his end. But hey, just happy to be finally, after so many months of having to take some time off to obviously address things that were needed to be handled and uh, to some extent still are going to be addressed and are still being handled going forward at this point. Uh, felt the time was right to finally... Uh, get this bad boy back at you and obviously i am not alone for this edition of the show as i am of course joined via the cell phone by the other half of internet radio's most dynamic duel checking in of course from the boss pad in alameda is the main man the boss man boss what's up man hi everybody man nice to be back i hope everybody is well uh doing i guess what Trying to get out of the pandemic. I don't know, is it an endemic now? I'm not sure. But uh, always all good here. Boss hanging. Boss doing what he does. You know, always surprising everybody. Always uh, sticking my nose around. And, you know, it's all good. It's all good. But glad to be back. Hope everybody's good as well. Definitely be glad. Um, or uh, Let me start over again. Apologies, by the way. Uh, I got my... Uh, booster shot today so i might uh, seem a little drunk tired off that's why and uh the only annoyance that i'm having about this is the fact that i'm probably gonna feel like straight utter crap when i go to see spider-man no way home at some point during the day tomorrow but eh, whatever it is what it is so apologies uh in advance if i kind of seem a little uh, uh <laughs> over the course of uh, this broadcast tonight uh gonna be a little shorter show than normal as well we only got four segments planned for you uh that's not to say that this could stretch out to the normal time but uh boss will be joining me for the first two halves of uh, tonight's broadcast. So before we go ahead and uh, get on into uh, taking a look back at the uh, dismal ridiculousness that was the 2021 season for your Oakland Athletics, uh, real quickly wanted to go ahead and, of course, uh, take this time to uh, look back at the individuals that, of course, tonight's broadcast is dedicated to. First, of course, being a man that uh, many of us out there that are Oakland Athletics fans uh, had a chance to talk to over the years, Heard his voice countless times on TV and radio broadcast over the years. Some of you out there are even old enough to remember when he was actually in uniform uh, playing on the field with your Oakland Athletics and uh, several other Major League Baseball teams out there. And it came as a real heartbreaker. I'm pretty sure for many of you out there, at least it was for me, it was almost on the level of when I heard Bill King had passed away that this hit me. And as, of course, when we all learned back on October the 13th that uh, Ray Foste, after a 16-year battle with cancer that pretty much him and his family kept in-house, uh, passed away on that day. He was um, age 74 uh, at the time when that happened. Uh, of course, as we all remember, he uh, left uh, during the course of the 2021 season because of uh, issues pertaining to that. Uh, took time off. Was you know, Obviously, we had all hoped he was going to come back, but unfortunately, uh, God had other plans in regards to that uh he of course uh, played for the cleveland indians from 1967 to 72 and then also from 76 to 77 of course was here with the a's from 1973 to 75 also played for the seattle mariners for one year in 
1977 and uh, played his final year in the majors with the Milwaukee Brewers in 1979. Uh, and then, of course, after he got done playing, got into broadcasting, stuck around here for many years, and, of course, is f- famous for many a call um, in his, you know, you know, obviously the year A's, so many great broadcasters, so many great calls. Ray definitely up there amongst those. And just, man, it just even now, it just it's still a shocker to realize that Ray's gone. Uh, boss, your thoughts on the passing of the late, great Ray Fossey? Man, you know, when he had to leave the booth, you, you just knew. Because people, you know, have to deal with cancer all the time. And, you know, they go through their treatments and, you know, they they have to come back. But when he found out that he was dealing with it for years and it made him step away, you didn't want to think it, but you just felt like this one was just a tad bit different. And, uh, uh hurt, guys. It, it hurt. And I know some people be like, oh, it's a sports person that, that, you know, you didn't know. No, it's more than that. I was born in 1982. So my entire life, I heard that man's voice. My entire life that I can remember, listening to A's games being the first sport that I loved and, you know, first sporting event that we all went to if you're in my A's bracket. Coliseum was where you, where you, where you went. Um, the get your sports fix. I'll see you with the, the arena as well, but, you know, especially uh, the A's. And, you know, hearing Ray, on, what is on uh, KICU Action 36, uh, Sports Channel, you know, Fox Sports Bay Area, Jazz Bay Area, I hear him on the radio, you know, it, it you know, it really affected me to hear that because you see so much changing in this area and the place that you know is not the same. It was just another reminder that things always change. And they never stay the same. We're all not here forever. Uh, so you make the best of it. I just think of all the kind words people said about him, how much they loved and appreciated who he was as a man, how his family thought of him as a grandfather uh as a father wife you know think about him as a husband you know those things you know i hope when my life ends i'm praying and i'm hoping uh that people say those things about me you know i was talking with my wife in the car the other day and about people who aren't really good people or great people and what are they going to say when it's time for them to go? Because we're, we're dead. Uh, we ain't coming back. Ain't like the movies. Ain't, heaven can wait. It's not like that. I was pondering to myself what would be said. And I think, you know, my good friends, my family would all say some great things about me. Be some funny stories. But I think overall I'd have fond memories uh, etched in a lot of people's minds. And for that man to do that for just a myriad of people, always being such a nice man to everybody. Now, I think that stands out uh, more than what he did on uh, the diamond, which was great. I mean, man was an all-star. If you're a major league baseball player, people, do you understand that hitting a baseball is still the toughest thing you can do in sports? Well, there's nothing tougher than hitting a ball that's going 90-something miles per hour straight line or moving at like 89 you know miles per hour I mean, some guys throw you know a 95 mile per hour fastball then they throw a change up with movement on it i mean the, the hand-eye coordination to be a baseball player at the major league level is at a level that we just cannot even quantify i mean if you ever sit behind the backstop behind home plate and actually see the split second those guys have to be able to see the ball come off a pitcher's hand and be able to absolutely turn it loose and be able to get good wood on it. It would blow your mind if you stand up there in the status box. So just think about being a catcher like Ray was. Think about that. 
think about calling a game while you're squatting, hurting, you know, your back and your knees, and being able to catch those pitches that are coming fast and that are moving in, you know, different directions. Think about that. Foul balls ricocheting off your mask. You know, obviously, no technology and equipment back then wasn't great. I mean, I had to do all of that. And there's nothing better, though, than when Ray Fossey got drafted. You guys remember the 1965 uh, picture everybody always talks about? Ray's got the smooth shades, you know, in the 60s, right? <laughs> Ray's just cool as hell, man. So I, I always got love for that guy. I wish we got to get uh, one more World Series, uh, especially at the Coliseum uh, with him there. Uh, but it's definitely going to be missed. And, um, you know, our thoughts and prayers always will be with this family. And, Ray, we love you to death. Definitely will be missed by everybody out there that is a longtime Oakland Athletics fan. And, you know, the reality is, yeah, maybe a lot of us out there didn't personally know the guy. But, you know, you, you heard his voice so much on the radio, watching games on TV, even sometimes occasionally chatting it up with him when you ran into him at the stadium that he almost felt like. He was basically a part of your extended family. And I also wanted to give a quick shout-out to uh, our good friends over at uh, Last Dive Bar who were allowing us to uh, use the uh, We Love You Ray image, which is, of course, part of the uh, We Love You Ray collection, which you can purchase over on lastdivebar.com, where, of course, all the proceeds from all the various uh, gear that they sell over there goes towards uh, various community charities in Oakland and the East Bay. The other individual, of course, that we wanted to uh, touch base on, who the show is also dedicated to as well, uh, passed away, unfortunately, uh, recently. Um, in fact, uh, look back at things just a little over a week ago, pretty much. And that, of course, was uh, Michael Neesmith, who, of course, is a singer, songwriter, uh, mostly well-known, of course, for being a member of the Monkees, who uh, passed away of natural causes at 78. He was looked at and considered by many to be a pop visionary who, of course, penned many of the uh, Monkees' uh, most enduring songs before laying the groundwork for country rock with the first national band in the early 70s. Of course, as mentioned, he passed away uh, last Friday um, from natural causes at the age of 78. Uh, a statement from the family was released as saying, with infinite love, we announced that Michael Neesmith has passed away this morning in his home, surrounded by family, peacefully, and of natural causes. We ask you that you respect our privacy at this time we thank you for the love and light that all of you have shown him and us and um if i remember correctly the group had actually just wrapped up uh, the tail end of a tour that they were on just within a few weeks ago and i've seen several friends out there that i've known that either were had gone to that last show that was part of that tour or were on that tour or went to a show a couple years ago and all that you know and i have you know parents that were a part of that group that listened um to the monkey so i've always heard you know a lot of their songs growing up in the household over the years uh boss uh don't know if you ever listened to any of the stuff that uh michael Neal i remember, the, I remember, I remember the, the, they had a tv show man <laughs> it's just, oh, if you're my age from the late 80s probably stopped showing reruns of it in the early 90s they had a TV show. It was like, hey, hey, some monkeys. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a kid, yeah, yeah. So I, I remember. So they were very, very popular. Uh, I watched uh, reruns of that with my parents too, by the way. But of course, my parents watched yeah, it when it I came out too. originally. Almost <laughs> when my mom was a child, she was watching that show. So yes, I'm very familiar with them. So uh, you know, I, I um, just think that. And I've said it on this show before, losing our legends, man. People who were just bigger than life for all of us. It happens, you know. 78 years, you know, toured around the world, ever famous. And people not saying a bad word about you. So I know when they have this wake, his passing, or his funeral, or celebration of life. I know people have nothing but great things uh, to say about him. It's just, uh, it's a tough one, man. So my heart goes out to his family and all his friends. And, you know, hey, man, you go up with all the other musical legends, man. You guys go out there and play that big concert in the sky, man. Enjoy the hell out of it. Yeah, man. God, the, the concerts that they're having up there now just must be off the hook looking forward to seeing those some of myself whenever i get up there <laughs> yeah. uh, ladies and gentlemen please join us in a moment of silence for both ray fossey and michael neesmith
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and get on down the road things here in uh, the first part of tonight's show with uh, real quickly, uh, looking back on what ended up being a really, 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 really uh, dismal 2021 for um, our beloved Green and Gold down the street here uh, from Dub Six Studios, a season in which, of course, we saw the Ace start off with seven straight losses, which made damn near the whole fan base, regardless how loyal you were or not, pull their head out. Looked like they were going to turn things around. Then, of course, we had the whole issue with the uh, situation of MLB now forcing them to look at Howard Terminal and Las Vegas. We'll have more on that following uh, the season review here in the first segment when we get you all up to speed on what's been going on with the uh, Howard Terminal project. But uh, when everything was all said and done, uh, it ended up being an 86 and uh, 76 season uh, for your Oakland Athletics. A year in which, uh, for most parts, even with some of the craziness and shenanigans, they actually had first place for a decent amount of time. And then just in August, just everything completely fell apart, fell off the wagon, just Everything came undone. It's just, you know, so many contributing factors to derailing this 2021 season, regardless if it was on the field stuff, off the field stuff. Just what more else can you say, boss? Man, that was so frustrating because it started up really messed up. And that's before the first pitcher first said that happened against the Astros. I knew, and if you guys go back to it, I was fearful uh, after 2020 playoffs, the, the, whatever the bubble playoffs, whatever the hell they want to call it, the pandemic playoffs, that we were going to lose Simeon, lose Hendricks, Goldsman, and we we're not going to have the same team coming back, and I was worried it was going to be a third place team. Started off ugly, zero and six. People were already upset. You know, you, you couldn't have as much people at the games as it is because uh, of COVID or what have you. And uh, you know, you had the the rumors of Vegas that what people were hearing, and then that came to fruition. Um, but the team got on a thirteen game win streak, and you know, uh, Cole Irvin and the guys, oh, we like Cole a lot here at the show. Uh, he uh, was a part of a 13-game win streak, and the team was really surging. And was, it, it was really a fun thing to see. Like, okay, maybe they'll surprise me, you know. Um, but the, uh, this season is going to be – that season is defined by two things. And I'm going to say it. I'm really be honest. Dave Cavill's disgusting, disingenuous, very insensitive tweet from the Vegas Knights playoff game, knowing that that has become a, a new rivalry with uh, the team in this area of San Jose Sharks. And because of you know, the NFL team that left, you know, you, uh, you, you, you hyping it up. You, you're going there repeatedly. That's defining the season. That's messing with players. Never mind the injuries of the guys. Some guys not hitting as well or whatever. Obviously, Chad was a great, but, but that thing had a cloud over his head to the point when the White Sox came in town or no, it was when the White Sox because either when they came in town or when they went to go play in Chicago, uh, it was probably in the summer, maybe in the summer in August, uh, when the when things started really just falling apart. But Liam Hendricks, you know, teammate of them, said that's hanging over their head. You know those guys talking. Like, man, what do I do with my family? You know, that stuff there, it wears on you. And you got to answer questions in the streets to your friends, your family, and the media. It gets ridiculous, and you have a jackass like Sky Bolt says the comment he says, and, and I don't care what nobody says. And if he hears it now, I don't care if the A's staff hears it. You can tell him he can go all the way to hell for saying being insensitive, not caring about us. Baseball is an everyday sport. It's not no we can get away. Little hey, come on, man. On Tuesday and Wednesday night, it, it gets serious though, man. That's talking this Vegas crap. But as you already see, 
The Vegas experiment is not working out for the NFL team so much now. Ticket sales are plummeting for the Knights. You don't realize that in Las Vegas, things are popular for two, maybe three years, and they move the hell on. I'm be 39 in a couple of days on Tuesday. I can remember when I was 21 heading to Vegas. I remember, oh, he throws it deep. Uh, oh, I, I remember the Palms area, the Ghost Wall, whatever, was truly popular in 2004. Even though, like, the Maloose went bankrupt and all that stuff. I mean, they had to sell their team. My point is, times change, they change very fast in that city. And so you thinking you're going to be hot shit or, and you, you know, you're, you're doing all this trolling. I lost all respect for Dave Cavill. I have. And I don't care if he follows the show or not. I'm going to be honest because that was absolutely deplorable what he did and what John Fisher allowed him to do. And then you see what happened during the summer uh, as far as Howard Terminal. Disrespectful. Very disrespectful to uh, the, the entire uh, city of Oakland, the county of Alameda. And Oakland is very disrespectful uh, about things and put you know, Oakland in a position where they almost had to put the infrastructure money. Oakland really does not have that money uh, to be putting up. Now, thank God the infrastructure help is coming on the way, evidently, with that Joe Biden build back better thing, but that was a hell of a risk by those people. Libby Shaft, you know, stood her ground because she really wants the A's to be here. But I just thought it was very, it was really, it was a really jacked up thing to do. And, and I, that's why I didn't want to go to the, now one game this year, this year. I'm not going to one, and everybody makes their own decision. I'm not going to one damn game. I'm not going to one damn game there until they absolutely call off Las Vegas and it's for real they're going to be here. There's no way I'm going. So that Vegas stuff, man, and like, come on. You guys don't want to do affordable housing. That stuff is part of the law. You get that on the development. It's the law. You don't want to follow law? Okay, you got to pay the fine. You don't want to pay the fine? Do you want to be here or not? You don't want to do community benefits, Dave Cavill. You are a true scumbag. And you are an absolute piece of dumb to ever say, we are doing community benefit. We're building you a stadium. Man, there's over 400,000 people in the city of Oakland. We're talking about just Oakland. And there's like 2.5 million in Alameda County. You know how many of those people don't go to games and don't care? Like, we care about sports, but you know people don't care about sports? It's not community benefit enough, though. To alter and do some stuff that you're doing there, which is fine. I, I think it should be done. But for the community not to get a real benefit over building you a stadium. That's so insulting to people. That, that, that's a very callous thing of you to say. And this thing, I defended you to a lot of people. But you are a carnival barker. You're a snake oil salesman. And I hope the same gets done, but I don't respect you. I don't respect what you've done in this process. So that was the one thing that was the number one reason why the season was derailed. Number two, you couldn't beat the Seattle Mariners. The A's were like 4-15 against that team. 4-15. If the A's could have played them any better, they might have a chance at the wild card. How many games did the A's win? Was it 87? It was it 86? 86 uh, games, right? Uh, 86. Let me pull it back up. Uh, yeah, 86. <laughs> and, 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 and thank you, by the way, A's, for shitting the bed in all those matchups against Seattle because I had to hear it every single time from Dre when you all bastards <laughs> lost. Continue, boss. <laughs> and, but Dre is right. Oh, you fully was <laughs> right for, me, for trolling me afterwards. I would have done the same thing. Your ability to not be Seattle, I mean, come on. There's nothing worse than that four-game sweep at home toward the uh, end of the season. You're playing for your life, and you guys over here getting bladdered at home? It's ridiculous. I mean, yeah, obviously the bullpen issues, uh, you know, that was bad, Trevino. Just, it, it was terrible. You saw it. 
just start happening uh, when they went to Chicago. And it just, you know, they played the Giants, uh, you know, I think they played the Yankees, all, all that stuff. It just deteriorated in front of your face. And when you see that happen in sports to your team, it's a, uh, you take a toll on you as a fan. It, it takes something out of you. But they didn't deserve to make it. Uh, congratulations to the Atlanta Braves who won the World Series. The right team won. Houston lost. <laughs> but uh, but still, you couldn't beat that team. You didn't show the ability uh, to stand to keep a lead versus them. You could be leading in the fifth inning. You knew by the seventh you were going to lose. So they shit the bed. And so I'm going to tell you guys now, it's just like after the 2014 debacle. You guys, listen, you listen to me good. There's three more years at the damn Coliseum. Three more seasons. You either get in last place or you're going to get fourth place. This seems going to be broken up. Bob Melvin's gone. Canna's gone. Other guys are gone. It's going to be an absolute shit show. But as long as you understand it's going to be a shit show, guys, you can live, you can get through it just like I did. For those three years after 2014, I realize what's happening. It is what it is. But those are two main reasons why it's tough. Those years happen, but it's become a common occurrence where you have a run if you're the A's, and then you get rid of, you know, your team. You get rid of your team, and you bring some young guys, minor leaguers, who you hope might turn to big time, big leaguers. But I expect Chapman and Olsen to be gone within the next year, if not, you know, sometime in the next month or two. I expect Montas to be gone. Probably Manaya because he's getting velocity back on his fastball. Bassett, you know, who, uh, you know, took that fastball off the face. God, that was so disgusting uh, to see that. But, um, you, you know, all those guys who are good for you, going to be gone. I mean, Ramon's going to come, Ramon Laureano's going to come back. Uh, after the, the Roy, the Petty suspension. But he's probably going to be uh, tradable because he has great glove and he has power and he has a lot of moxie. Put it this way, summer next year, it's going to be really tough. My guys are not going to be there. This is the reality of an A's fan until you get your new stadium and maybe you get a philosophical change from ownership who wants to spend I don't see that happening, even if you get the new stadium. But what do I know, Keith? What do I know? And for the record, you know, I don't blame many out there like Boss who ended up either not going or barely went at all. Um, I only Uh, went to one game the entire year myself, uh, and that was the game, of course, where the A's uh, hosted my family on the anniversary of uh, my aunt's death. But, you know, fully understandable. Just, like again, just so much drama on the field and off the field on why many just threw up their hands eventually to the season and said, fuck it. And, you know, man, just lots of questions that um, are going to be either answered or go unanswered uh, in the coming months. Uh, Boss, you kind of uh, hinted at it a little bit as far as uh, the stuff that's been going on on and off since uh, May in regards to everything with Howard Terminal versus the whole parallel path with whatever they want to attempt to try to do in Vegas. Uh, Real quickly, before we take our first break of the night, and I fire off to everyone what the fan question is if they haven't had a chance to see it yet, uh, why don't you go and bring everyone into speed on uh, recent developments in regards to Howard Terminal that came out today. Well, uh, I guess Casey Pratt of Channel 7, um, and I got a call early in the morning anyway, but Casey, and I won't go, and don't worry, Source, I'm not going to tell everything that you told me. Now, there's just no point. And I'm not either, so don't worry. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so the EIR is coming out tomorrow morning. It's, it's, It's an excellent thing that's coming out for people who have hope, and that's all of us, that the team is going to stay and build at Howard Terminal. I have a world-class ballpark, something that um, can rival, uh, you know, what you see across the Bay or in this and other cities. Um, so it's 3,500-page EIR. It's going to take a lot to sift through. I mean, we're going to have to be relying on some of the experts out there that really know how to read this stuff. There's going to be a lot of legalese terms in there. I mean, you have to. The lawyers are going to get involved. There's going to be a lawsuit. Um, you're going to have, um, what's those pussies? Uh, East Oakland, uh, 
he's choking Stadium Alliance and all these other guys, the merchant shipping and Mike Jacob and all the other cowards. Uh, they, they are definitely going to uh, make their case for uh, why this needs to be stopped. But he got 270 days. Um, so I told him, let me tell you something. So I told the EIR, the EIR is going to be certified, guys. They just uh, Guys, it's going to be certified. Tell me EIRs, special sports teams that don't get approved. Tell me where. Ain't going to happen. It's not going to happen. So the fact that it's not going to happen, prepare yourself now. But the A's have to adhere to the housing and the CBA things. You better be prepared for that. But for all the, the, the people out there, you know, who want to see who, who want to see uh, the A's move or who's, who's pining on it, you know, they're, uh, no, they're feeling a tad nervous, but, but then on the flip side, it's all going to come down to the A's. It's going to come to John Fisher, what he wants to do. Now, I've heard different stuff from people that he wants to, you know, that, that, that he wants to be here and that he's focused on our terminal. Then I hear from people, you know, in other places, hey, he's trying to move out there. You know, so, I mean, it... it I've heard a story that sometimes he flip-flops every freaking day on what he wants to do, and it's actually starting to piss MLB off. So who knows what the hell it is at this point. (laughs) You know, and the the thing is, which I wish I would have... And I knew it, but I didn't want to adhere to it, even when the situation with the Raiders here when they were leaving. At the end of the day, billionaires will do what they want to do, guys. They go, they got the gusto, they got the financial means to do it, especially his family. Now you're talking about somebody whose family oh what a move, Travis Kelsey. Uh uh oh, this white boy's gonna score a touchdown. Oh, the Chiefs win. Wow, what a game. But um <laughs> Classic uh, AFR with Boss Man getting distracted yeah, by a game on the TV while we broadcast. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> Yep, we're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with sports, baby. But that was a hell of a play though. But um you you're gonna see uh, a situation where it's put up with shut up coming up. And so the, this, the, this comes out tomorrow. The planning commission, I expect in January or February to make, to, uh, to approve things. Uh, city, city council will have to approve, approve something probably in spring. All right. Well, uh, A's, what are you going to do? Put up a shut up. I, I mean, where's the where's their stadium renderings for or well, Las Vegas? What land are they going to choose? I mean, we heard Tropicana site, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But you know, and we seen a fake rendering that wasn't their render. What's really going to happen? What's really going on? It's going to be very. It's going to be a very good question. You got to you know stuff with Sequa, the the lands you know, commission or whatever, all these other environmental groups. You have a lot of stuff uh, to play here. So sit back and enjoy the show because there's going to be a lot to it. But nothing is for nothing is for certain here, people. And so it's a step for sure. But this thing in the day is going is to be on. It, 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 it's, uh, yeah, it's married to one. Uh, this is going to be a, quite a roller coaster ride. So I'm not going to get my hopes up too high. I mean, I think it's good. I'm not going to get my hopes up too high. You got to show me. You got to show me. You know. Yep, the, you know. Th- that's pretty much how it is for a, l- a lot of people at this point. You know, even many of us out there that have been of longtime advocates of this project and have supported this project, it is basically at this point now where it's going to be put up or shut up on the A's part in regards to this. And I'm waiting uh, to hear back. Let me ask you, I got to ask you, in your opinion, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. Uh, uh, in your opinion, how many players are there on the A's Open Stadium Alliance uh, shoot out on the toilet when they saw that this is coming out. I mean, like, it, you know, the, 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 you think it came out just big bricks, or it came out like 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 a like a hot Sunday fudge, man. Right? <laughs> they are nervous oh, right the- now. Well, man, I would be too if I were out there and I were, you know, them and in their shoes and all the 
crap and BS that them and others have spread in re- regards to this whole thing. And uh, as many of you have saw out there, obviously, since, you know, I don't know about y'all out there, I don't know about boss, but I'm still expecting the lockout to be happening come January 6th when we do our next show. So uh, our plan at least is, hey, if the lockout is still going on on January 6th, then, hey, we'll spend uh, our next broadcast breaking down that uh, environmental impact record, uh, uh, report. Uh, there, there I go, getting all drowsy and tongue twisted from the damn booster shot. Real quickly, before we take our first break of the night, there is a fan question out there uh, for those of you that want to chime in. So make your way over to uh, either Facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or our Twitter page at A's underscore fan underscore radio to submit your response to the fan question. And we want to hear from y'all on your thoughts on hearing that the final EIR for Howard Terminal is finally coming out. We come back. We have some bad news and some good news to share with y'all that's a little bit AFR related. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Guys, I know, because I was in the building for a quick second tonight. I got to get my party shot, man. Okay, hold on. Uh, Let me go uh, ahead and get on down to your uh, – in in that case, I'm going to have to scrub one thing out of there, which is I I guess we'll have to – we'll we'll go and share the uh, the AASCG stuff for the next time you come on the show then. But uh, let me go ahead and just get on down real quick. That that, that whole thing is – yeah, that's going to be very interesting. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah. We'll, we'll save that then for uh, as part of show number 299 then as well. So next broadcast, we'll have HT EIR breakdown and AASCG news. With that, Boss, your final thoughts before I uh, drive you all insane for the remainder of the night. You smash and grab people. You guys are the dumbest unevolved Neanderthal I've ever seen in human history. Yes, we know people's money's low because stuff with the pandemic, people lost their jobs. But you guys you defund the police stuff. How are you looking right now? All you liberals, all you Democrats, how are you looking right now? Not all you, I'm not, not every all, all people from the left, I'm just saying some of you people who support that, some of you Democratic officials who are supporting that, you look stupid now. Because London Breed in San Francisco is now saying we got to crack down and stop this. Um, hello? When you give people that kind of leeway where there's zero bail and there's really no punishment for acting a fool, this is what happens. You know people are desperate right now. Folks, I guarantee you this is going to stop after the holidays. It's going to stop. People are trying to make sure their kids and, you know, girlfriends, mistresses, wives, whoever, family members are getting uh, the gifts because there's just such a tradition. And people don't care to hear what excuses you have for it not happening, uh, on, uh, you know, in 2021. You know, especially if you're a man, you had a household. And a woman don't want to hear no excuse for me why you ain't bringing home the bacon, you know, in the verbal sense. You know, I just totally disagree with you guys. Either Walnut Creek, San Francisco, you guys running up into a dog on um, what's that place? Cannabis Club, robbing people, Santana Woe, L.A. Man, you guys are out of pocket. You're going to get someone hurt in the worst way imaginable. Some people did get hurt. You guys didn't get yourself hurt. So guess what? That person who you were stealing for. That, that 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 woman who you sit for, that child who you sit for, what good is it when you're in jail or worse, the police shoot you? You know, I understand we got to stop police brutality, but this shit here is not a win. This was stupid. It's always like grown ups doing this. Like what? What are you doing? Thirty four years old doing this? Are you serious? I said this is like an eighteen year old. He's not stupid to do, but you're a grown man. You a grown ass man. You better find a different way. You better go work a couple of extra hours at Burger King. <laughs> you know, there's no shame because guess what? There's always work at the post office. Seriously. So you people got to get a grip on yourself. So if you guys were a part of it, if you know people who were, you need to admonish them, tell them how stupid they are. I, I'm sorry, you're an idiot. I don't feel you. I don't respect your hustle because you ain't hustling. You ain't grinding. I'm working for mines. And even if I didn't have a, 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 a gig, I'm not going to go out there 
and go risk my freedom, what you guys are doing. Oh, they going to get you guys. They let you guys out with zero bail for right now, but they're going to get you guys. And you are going to pay a hefty price that's not going to come out of a checkbook. Anyhow, you guys take care. Y'all be cool. Boston will be back at you. Boss man, thank you as always for joining us and uh, being back here with us on our return after a six month month hiatus. You enjoy the rest of your evening, of course, with the Boss family. That means the rest of y'all are uh, stuck with yours truly uh, for the remainder of this bloody broadcast. And we still got uh, about three more segments to uh, come at you before the night's over with. Uh, real quickly, again, just want to re-mention there is a fan question of the night, so uh, you haven't had a chance to yet. Make your way over to either Facebook.com slash A's Fan Radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter. And uh, submit your response, which, of course, I will read uh, live on the air at the end of tonight's show. And tonight's fan question is, of course, with the news coming out today about it being released tomorrow. We want to hear y'all's thoughts on the final version of the draft, of the, I almost said draft, yeah, the final version of the EIR uh, for Howard Terminal uh, coming out tomorrow. And again, definitely be looking forward to uh, taking a look at that over the course of the next couple weeks and uh, breaking that down on the next edition of the show we do on January 6th. And uh, that, of course, is when we'll also share uh, some of the AASEG-related stuff that I had hoped to uh, talk on the broadcast about tonight because uh, Boss has been following that way more closely closely than I have and I'd really hoped that he was going to be around and we weren't going to you know of course it happens first thing and it ended up running a little bit longer than I thought it was but you know it happens when we want to get our thoughts out about how dismal the season this is and share our input on what's going on with the future of the team uh, being here in Oakland so uh, we'll go ahead and look at that AACG stuff on uh, the next show along with the breakdown of the EIR so with that being said when we come back from our first break of the night we will uh, go ahead and share that bad news and good news with y'all that is uh, kind of AFR related and uh Take a look at what the latest is with the uh, lockout in Major League Baseball. That and more coming your way on the grand return of A's Fan Radio, show number 298, dedicated, of course, to Ray Fosse and Michael D. Smith of the Monkees. <laughs> One of two Monkees classics appearing on the soundtrack for tonight's show. Uh, that one, of course, was uh, one of the last uh, Monkey songs that Mike Neesmith uh, sung on uh, for the Monkees back in 1969. And then, of course, um, I'll let you all wait to hear the one I picked, uh, which, of course, uh, Mike uh, stream, strums the guitar on um, when it comes up. Uh, I'll let you all go ahead and wait, though, of course, to find out what that is. And that song will be coming at you when we get to the final break of tonight's broadcast. Welcome back, everybody. It is show number two, six, uh, 298. God, I'm off by a whole bunch of numbers <laughs> right now. Uh, again, bear with me. I did get my COVID booster shot today, so I might seem a little uh, floaty, I guess you could say, at some point uh, and might get a little tongue twist and sidetracked a little bit here and there so apologies again in advance but welcome back to show number 298 of your number one source for everything and anything on your oakland for now athletics no that a little quick that you know that's for boss right there since he isn't here to say that oakland for now athletics uh corporal oaktown of course coming at you solo for the remainder of this broadcast i was joined uh, in the first segment of tonight's show by the other half of what's become known as the dynamic duel and that's of course my co-host the main man the boss man as we of course uh Took a look back at uh, the disaster that was the 2021 season for your Oakland Athletics and uh, got you all up to speed on some of the stuff that uh, is going down with Howard Terminal at this point in time. Um, as I mentioned uh, before we get on further and, uh, you know, take a look at uh, the bloody uh, lockout that uh, has MLB more than not basically locked out and locked down at this point. Uh, do have a couple tidbits of AFR related news that I did want to get out of the way. The first one is unfortunately the uh, the bad news. And this is, of course, uh, actually news that I had been hoping uh, that I wasn't going to share on a show broadcast until I uh, got a little bit more info about it. But this was, of course, back when I 
first found out that this happened back in October, early November, when we thought we were going to be coming back online with the show back then, and then a whole bunch of other stuff came up. Uh, and I'm actually still trying to find out exactly what happened at this point, but um, figured we'd go ahead and uh, let you all know that don't know at this point that uh, basically uh, back in um, as of June, uh, mid to late June, early July of this year, um, Lost Relita Cafe over at 446 East 12th Street has officially closed, it looks like. Um, I actually, uh, maybe somebody sent me something, and I just happened to miss it because of things that were going on um, at that point in time. Uh, but I decided just randomly at the end of October, beginning of November, um, when I was out and about to uh, make a trip down there to basically go by say what's up to Jose and the Familia, see what was happening, see how things were going. Because uh, I hadn't really had a chance to make it down that way uh, since probably about March, April-ish time frame was the last time I was down in the area over there at Fifth Avenue and East 12th Street. Uh, basically, was just going down there, like I said, to go see what was going on, see how everybody was doing, and uh, finally get my one mic stand that I still have uh, sitting over there in the back part of the bar. And uh, I get over there and basically come across what you all are looking at on your screen, which is uh, two for sale signs on you know, both sides of the building. The restaurant side is basically completely cleared out. No seats at all. None of the you know paintings and all that stuff are out there. Even all the stuff in the kitchen's been cleaned out. The office has been cleaned out. Uh, looks like you know they still have you know the, all the tables and stuff over in the bar. And then from what I could see, for those of you that obviously went over there in the last couple of years, I could still see the little A setup he has on the bar side, you know, right above the little entryway that went back and forth between the restaurant and the bar. But uh, basically, um, I guess what was it, Berkeley side put out an article in early July after uh, many of the longtime customers and patrons of La Trolita started going there roughly, like I said, you know, middle to end of June. And it was dark. Nobody there. Nothing going on. And then, basically, come to find out that uh, it's closed. So, uh, just, just very unfortunate to have seen that, and the fact that I happened to just find out about it as late as I did, and uh, just you know, still trying to. Again, as I mentioned, I've been trying to find out what's been going on. Uh, my buddy um, Grizz, who of course is uh, the founder of Forever Oakland, has been trying to reach out to all of his various contacts as well and try to find out what exactly went down, just if it was, you know, ultimately because of, you know, you know, COVID going on, if something happened with someone in the family, or just they were at the point where they just didn't want to, you know, run the restaurant anymore after so many years, you know, combination of, you know, factors of all the above or what it is. And, you know, the, the reality of it is, is I need to check and make sure I still have Jose's email and ultimately find out, um, what exactly went down so that way I can at least get y'all some sort of update in regards to that. But, uh, yeah, for those of you that didn't know, now you know that, uh, unfortunately, La Eshlita Cafe and Bar is no more at 446 East 12th Street. And, uh, again, once I find out exactly what's going on, I'll either bring up something on a future show or post something online, or I'll probably do both in case, you know, that way if y'all miss one, you can get the update um, on another. But just uh, very unfortunate to hear that. And, you know, the reality is, is we're probably still a long way before we're comfortable with going back out and doing this show in public um, like we used to. But, you know, I was looking real forward to when that time came going back to La Estrelita. And, you know, looks like that that's not going to be the case now. So, uh, Lucas, if you happen to be out there listening, if uh, that offer that you uh, gave us about being a fallback spot uh, is still up for grabs, uh, it won't be as a fallback now. It would be as our future main go-to spot. Uh, whenever we're ready to go back out in the public and do shows up, uh, be ready to hear from us at some point. Um, so that's the bad news. Uh, the good news is, though, I did want to go ahead and bring up that we uh, do have a guest lined up to uh, come on a future edition of the show once we start to get back into the uh, the swing of things with doing everything. And like I said, uh, right now the only future show we have planned out as of right now is that show that I mentioned that will be going down on January the 6th of uh, next year. So a couple weeks away from that uh, where we're going to take a look at the uh, final EIR. Uh, Boss is going to share uh, tidbits of on AASEG Oakland for those of you out there that might be a little bit confused on what exactly has been going on with that or if you haven't been following that whole um, situation closely. Uh, and again, a lot of that's because of the whole thing with the lockout right now, which is kind of why I'm not really wanting to set a real, you know, set out full schedule 
if there's not going to be anything to talk about and there's going to be nothing going on um, for a couple months, if not more. I mean, just, you know, then I'll obviously get a little bit more in the stuff when we start talking about the lockout. But the uh, the piece of good news that I wanted to share is that future guest uh, happens to be a former Major League Baseball player, uh, catcher specifically, and oh, yeah. He's my god brother, by the way, and uh, just wanted to share with you all that eventually, at some point down the road, we will have uh, former Major League catcher Brian Johnson pop in as a guest here on A's Fan Radio, uh, something that I've actually been uh, trying to uh, get set up for the last couple of years, a uh, segment that many of my uh, uh, listeners out there, many of you are listeners out there that have followed the show for a long time and have known about this connection that I have with BJ, have asked me several times to get BJ to come on the show and uh, talked to him a couple weeks ago and he, you know, hit me back finally and he's definitely interested, looks forward to it. So again, definitely will be looking forward to have this, um, you know, some of y'all out there sitting there question, really, you're going to bring a former giant on the show. Hey, he's, he's my God brother. All right. So yes, I'm going to bring a former giant on the show. And if y'all have a problem with it, uh, tough doohickey at this point, uh, definitely be looking forward to talking to him about his, uh, time in the majors, obviously that whole shared, uh, you know, narrative that we have of being mentored uh, by our late uh, godfather, Llewellyn E. Thompson II, who many of you out there who knew him also knew him as Wally, and uh, also obviously check in uh, and see what he's been up to since uh, he retired uh, from playing the game. So definitely we'll look forward to that. So uh, bad, again, bad news, lost for Lita closed. Good news, though, we will have uh, former MLB catcher and my godbrother, Brian Johnson, on a future edition of A's Fan Radio. And uh, again, once we finally got a rough idea of what a potentially a future schedule will look like, once we see how things are going with uh, the MLB lockout and we have a bigger rough idea of what's going to happen, then I'll hit up BJ, lock in a date, and then let you all know what's going on with that. Now, about... Uh, the lockout. And um, real quickly, um, a lot of this stuff I'm mainly going to be reading off of a, a write-up that uh, was put up by uh, Dan Perry uh, over on CBS.com. Uh, and it basically just a little bit just to kind of explain to you all what's going on in case you've been kind of following, have it been, or even if you have been following, you're kind of still scratching your head about what's going on. But uh, this is basically... Uh, Everything, you, I guess, you need to know about baseball's first work stoppage since the 94-95 season. Uh, at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on December the 1st, the collective bargain agreement, CBA, negotiated a cord that governs almost every aspect of the working relationship between Major League Baseball players and team owners expired. Less than two hours prior to that deadline, however, owners voted unanimously to force a work stoppage on that Thursday, December the 2nd. They did so in the form of a lockout. As such, baseball will endure a work stoppage for the first time since the player strike of 1994 95. Speaking of which, you might right now be wondering what a lockout is, how it works, what's the point of it, and what it means for the sport. Thankfully, we are here, outfitted with our plus 10 velvet brocade uh, pants of wisdom to explain all that. Of course, I'm guessing that's uh, the individual uh, that wrote this. Shall we commence? We shall commence in time honored FAQ fashion. What is a lockout? There is, in essence, two kinds of labor stoppages. A strike is when the labor side, players as represented by their union in this instance, put a halt to operation. A lockout is when the management side, team owners in this instance, initiate the stoppage. In plain spoken terms, a strike is a refusal to work, and a lockout is a refusal to permit work to be done. In the sphere of, of Major League Baseball, a lockout means that the free agency process will be frozen with some big names still on the market. This freezing is why we saw such a swarm of, of signings, of course, leading up to the CBA expiration date. Since all transactions will be put on hold, the lockout also means no trades. That's why, of course, we haven't seen uh, Matt Olson, Matt Chapman, or any of the individuals that many of us out there are suspecting that the A's are going to try to move, uh, have been moved uh, yet at this point in time. Uh, let's see. Uh, players will be barred from using team facilities during the lockout and the stoppage lasts for more than just a few days and the winter meetings and Rule 5 draft will be canceled and postponed indefinitely, respectively. Uh, they ended up doing the minor league uh, portion of the Rule 5 draft, but yeah, they ended up not doing any of the Major League portion stuff, obviously, with that uh, still going on at this point in time. Get well in the January without an agreement, and the spring training schedule could be in peril. Uh, the worst-case scenario is that the lockout lasts long enough to force rescheduling or even cancellation of regular season games. It's a bit premature to fret over that right now, but it's within the range of possible outcomes. 
Bottom line, a lockout means the sport is on hold across all fronts until further notice. Further notice in this instance almost certainly means what a new CBA is agreed to in principle. Why is there a lockout? As indicated above, it's because a new CBA has not yet been agreed to and that owners are unwilling to allow the offseason to proceed without one. Like those owners, players aren't typically fond of moving forward with the usual offseason and in-season calendar without a CBA in place. And they would likely strike close to the start of the season or doing the season when their leverage is higher. Owners, however, don't want the players to gain such leverage. So a lockout well in advance of spring training in some ways is a preemptive measure on the part of owners and Commissioner Rob Manfred, whose job is to basically do the bidding of the team owners. The aim is not only to accelerate the pace of CBA negotiations, but also to make it more likely that the players will bend to the owner's will on multiple fronts. Above all, this is an attempt by teams to put pressure on the union to agree to the owner's uh, suite of proposals for the next CBA. Uh, Sorry, y'all, I'm kind of getting distracted as uh, Mrs. Corporal Oaktown just uh, walked in the door from work. Further teams, uh, let me start over again. Further, teams hope that bringing the game to a halt with some unsigned players will still, uh, still out there will undermine union solidarity as the lockout drags on. But, uh, this shutdown is a dramatic measure regardless of the timing, the MLB Players Association said in a statement. It's not required by law or for any other reason. It was the owner's choice, plain and simple, specifically calculated to pressure players into relinquishing rights and benefits and abandoning good faith bargaining proposals that will benefit not just players, but the game and industry as a whole. How long will the MLB lockout last? It is unknowable, or this is unknowable. It's an entirely fluid situation, but both sides some time ago expressed what can be termed as soft optimism that something would get done before the current CBA expired. That didn't come to pass, but it does suggest that at least a foundation is in place. In the past, some labor stoppages have lasted less than a week, uh, which obviously wasn't the case here with this one, and others have been numbered in months. The latter would visit massive upheavals upon the sport, and there are heavy incentives on each side to avoid uh, having it come to that. For now, the default assumption is that matters are resolved before the regular season is affected. Uh, Manfred, in a Thursday conference, uh, a morning conference, uh, did I expect, uh, was it? I don't know if this is uh, to this Thursday or Thursday, the week of when all this went down, uh, expressed optimism about starting the 2022 uh, regular season, uh, the 2022 regular season on time. What are they fighting over? From the player standpoint, they'd like to address their shrinking share of those league revenues, indicated in part by the declining average player salary, the occasional practice. Uh, uh, of uh, service time manipulation, i.e., when, team when teams hold back a clearly ready prospect in order to delay his free agency and arbitration eligibility for a full year, and the tanking problem, amongst other matters. Teams have increasingly trended younger in their roster construction, and the union will be fighting to get those younger players paid more in line with their on-field value, while also seeking incentives to make teams more competitive with one another. The owners, meantime, will likely be looking to maintain the status quo since the expiring CBA largely worked out to their benefit. In the end, yes, it's a fight over money, which, to be fair, is a very good reason to fight. Has this happened before? This marks the fourth lockout since MLB and the unions negotiated the first CBA back in the late 1960s. The first owner lockout was in 1973 and it was resolved before any regular season games were affected. The 1976 lockout came next and it also ended without any effects on the regular season. Then came the 1990 lockout. Again, no regular season games were canceled, but spring training was greatly compromised as well. The start of the regular season was pushed back. To the extent that lockout... Uh, to the extent that lockout history is any guide, it would be surprising if the lockout of 2021 lasted long enough to alter the 2022 regular season schedule. Uh, so pretty much, you know, that's the gist of uh, what's going on at this point. And uh, one thing that I'm shocked that obviously wasn't mentioned in there is the uh, whole issue and discussions, obviously, of a, a potential floor cap, uh, not a ceiling cap, but a floor cap to obviously uh, – get individuals, uh, i.e. like John Fisher, to uh, start spending uh, some money and actually start uh, being competitive. And just the reality is the, the writing was on the wall for the last 16 months that we were probably unfortunately heading in the direction of a lockout going down in Major League Baseball. You, you, you really saw the early signs of uh, – the direction this was going to go into when you saw a lot of the negotiations and talks about, you know, how to get the season start started back up last year uh, because of COVID. A lot of the issues with some of the, uh, the some of the higher ups in the league wanting to delay this past season uh, because of issues with COVID and the players basically being like, nah, we want a full season and a full regular spring training after what happened uh, last year. So just, you know, the, the writing was on the wall, unfortunately, that, 
it was going to come to this point where a lockout was going to happen. Many out there, you know, thought that potentially the players were going to end up striking, but I always had my suspicion that uh, if nothing got negotiated and finalized by that 11.59 p.m. Uh, Eastern time deadline on the 1st, that the uh, the owners were going to lock the players out. And uh, who, who knows when this is going to come to an end. Um, the hope would be soon. That way we can have some stuff to talk about on this damn show. Uh, but... The, it, it's ultimately on the players and the owners to figure that out and get a CBA uh, negotiated at this point. And, you know, I understand, you know, the whole kind of thing out there with some of y'all, you know, not wanting to support either side because, you know, it's millionaires and billionaires fighting over money, basically, at this point. But uh, one thing's for sure, I, you know, regardless if that's how I look at it, I also uh, feel more for the players than for the owners and you know the players should be able to get fairly compensated and have things done and all that good stuff but you know that's ultimately on those adults in that room to get figured out and the hope is get it done sooner rather than later otherwise you increase the chance of your sport being affected and losing fans again just like you had back when you had the strike back in 94 95 so there's probably that incentive there to get that you know done as well but again it's on the adults that are the owners and the players union uh, to get that one figured out. And uh, we'll obviously keep you all up to date as best as we can on that uh, with that situation going on. Uh, Man, just hope they do get sorted out because it'd be nice to be able to actually stick to a normal schedule of shows again after the fact that we've been gone for almost six months and then this gets thrown in everybody's face. But uh, hey, We'll see what happens. Again, there is a fan question of the night, uh, so if you haven't had a chance to do so yet, uh, go ahead and make your way over to facebook.com slash A's fan radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter and submit your response to the fan question of the night. And tonight's fan question is, uh, with, of course, the news coming out today that it will be dropped tomorrow, we want to hear y'all's thoughts on the fact that, hey, we're finally going to get to see the final dr- uh, version of the environmental impact report for the Howard Terminal Project. We come back, we're going to go ahead and uh, recap the final standings in Major League Baseball for the 2021 season and also quickly look over what went down in the postseason uh, for Major League Baseball this year. That and the back end of things, of course, we come back at you here on show number 298 of A's Fan Radio. The show broadcast, of course, is dedicated to Ray Fossey and Michael Neesmith. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue on down the road here on show number 298 of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland athletics. It is A's Fan Radio. This is Corporal Oaktown, uh, who will be uh, solo, basically, for the rest of the show if you're just uh, now tuning in. Boss Man, of course, joined me uh, during the first segment of tonight's broadcast and uh, looks forward to coming back at you when we uh, do the next edition of the show on January the 6th, where we break down the high, uh, the final version of the Howard Terminal EIR, and of course, uh, catch you all up to speed on things with uh, AASCG Oakland, uh, for those of you out there that haven't been paying attention to uh, what they're doing, who they are, and uh, what they got planned potentially for the future of the Coliseum site. So that, of course, and the final version of the EIR uh, to look forward to when we come at you for the next edition of the show. Uh, Still got two segments, though, uh, on this edition of the show before you all got to sit back and relax and wait for us to come at you uh, in a couple of weeks on on the 6th, and uh, we'll go ahead and continue on down the road here by quickly, uh, in this segment, taking a look back at how things uh, ended in the 2021 season in Major League Baseball. We, of course, will begin first with uh, taking a look at what the final standings ended up being in MLB last year. We'll, of course, start off first with the uh, American League, which is, of course, the league that the Oakland Athletics are in. And as we usually always do in this case when we do this, we'll start off over in the AL West, where those Punk-ass Houston Astros once again uh, won the division after, of course, we took the division last year during a COVID-shortened season. The Astros uh, would regain the top spot in the AL West in 2021 as they clinched the division with a record of 95-97. and uh, The Seattle Mariners finished in second with a record of 90-72. and Your Oakland Athletics, who, of course, we mentioned earlier during the season review segment, uh, held first place damn near, it seemed like, the majority of the year, but uh, uh, 
majority of the year doesn't matter, obviously. What matters is what those standings are at the end of the day come game 162. And uh, once game 162 was played, your Oakland Athletics had fallen all the way to third in the AL West with a record of 86 and 76. The Anaheim Devils finished up at 77 and 85 um, after uh, losing Mike Trout earlier in the year and you know having a whole bunch of injuries and just the same old crap affect them. And the Texas Rangers were the Texas Rangers finished in last place with a record of 60 and 102. Looking around at uh, things in the rest of the American League over in the AL East, you had the Tampa Bay Rays win the division with a record of 162. That was also the top record uh, in the entire American League. The Boston Red Sox and the New York Yankees finished uh, tied for second with records of 92 and 70, and they ended up, of course, being the two wild card representatives uh, for the American League in uh, this past season's post season. Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays finished fourth with a record of 91-72, and 72, and the Baltimore Orioles, who of course are one of the teams you can uh, accuse of that whole uh, tanking stuff that I mentioned as part of the whole uh, situation with the lockdown that the players are getting tired of. Uh, the Baltimore Orioles tank their way to a 52 wins and 110 losses to finish uh, last in the AL East, and that also is the uh, the worst record in the American League, and uh, just want to look at things. Uh, that was the worst record in all of, uh, well, wait, no, they were tied for the worst record in baseball last year, and uh, you'll all find out who the team in the NL was that tied with them for the worst record in the AL uh, or in the league when we get over to the uh, NL standings here in a bit. Finally, to wrap up things in the standings for the uh, AL are the Central standings, where you had the White Sox win the Central with a record of 93 and 69. The Cleveland Indians finished second with a record of 80 and 82. The Detroit Tigers third with a record of 77 and 85. The Kansas City Royals were fourth with a record of 74 and 88 and the Minnesota Twins who some thought were going to be a playoff hopeful and at times you know kind of you know maybe looked like it did not end up living up to that hype they finished last in the AL Central with a record of 73 and 89 moving on over from what's become known by many of you old school baseball fans is the junior circuit let's head on over now and see how things ended up being uh, finalized uh, as far as the standings over in the senior circuit. Here's what uh, ended up being the final standings over in the National League in 2021. Starting off first with the NL East, that of course uh, was won by the Atlanta Braves uh, with a record of 88 and 73. The Philadelphia Phillies finished second with a record of 82 and 80. The New York Mets uh, third, 77 and 85. The Miami Marlins 67 and 95 for fourth place. And the Washington Nationals two years removed uh, from a world title back in 2019 uh, finished last after um, trading off guys like Max Scherzer and uh, 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 God there goes that damn booster shot kicking in with the drowsiness and the uh, let me try again the Nationals after of course moving Max Scherzer and a whole bunch of other guys uh, I believe Trey Turner was one of those cats or you know somebody over there that was that ended up getting sent to the Dodgers along with Scherzer just basically traded off pieces and finished last in the East with a record of 65 and 97. Final standings over in the NL Central were as follows. You had the Milwaukee Brewers uh, win the division with a record of 95 and 67. The St. Louis Cardinals finished second with a record of 90 and 72 and were one of the wild card teams in the NL this past year. The Cincinnati Reds finished third with a record of 83 and 79. The Cubs fourth with a record of 71 and 91 and the Pittsburgh Pirates uh, continue to be the Pittsburgh Pirates and finished in last place with a record of 61 and 101. Finally to wrap up the standings from last year in baseball we come of course to uh, what I have called on this show for the last several years the wild wild NL West. The uh, San Francisco Giants won the division uh, somehow. Just dumb luck, I guess. I don't know. And, you know, some of the moves they made, I guess you could say, paid off with that dumb luck, too. But the uh, the Giants won the NL West and actually had the best record in uh, the NL and all of baseball, unfortunately, for all of us that are not fans of that pumpkin color team across the bay. 107-55 uh, and 55 was their record. Uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers finished second with a record of 106-56. and 56. They, of course, took the other 
wild card spot in the NL. The Padres finished with a record of 79 and 83, so they kind of really ended up not living up to the hype that many of us thought was going to happen last year when many of us actually thought it was going to be a three team race for the for the NL West uh, this past year. Uh, the Colorado Rockies 74 and 87, most likely probably looking at a rebuild and people sitting there waiting to find out where Trevor Story is going to end up landing once the lockout ends. And uh, that other team that I mentioned to you that tied with the uh, the Orioles for their worst record in the in the majors of this past year. The other team that finished 52 and 110 was the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, so yeah, not good times for uh, fans out in the desert um, of the D-backs uh, in 2021. Uh, on that note, uh, real quickly here, here's how the uh, well, yeah, that's your National League uh, final standings for uh, 2021. And uh, real quickly here, here's how the uh, postseason ended up playing out uh, for any of y'all that didn't pay attention or were under a rock or just flat out didn't give a crap. Uh, the AL wild card went as five as follows, uh, which happened, of course, back on October the 5th. The Red Sox winning that game by the final of 6-2. to two. Uh, The NL wild card game saw the Dodgers beat the Cardinals by the final of 3-1. to one. Uh, In the ALDS matchup between the Astros and the White Sox, you saw the uh, White, uh, the Astros take game one by the final of 6-1. to one. They also took game two by the final of 9-4. to four. Uh, Chicago would take game three by the final of 12 to 6 but uh, they wouldn't be able to muster up enough energy to force that series to five games as the Astros would ultimately clinch the fourth game uh, of that series by the final of 10 to 1 to advance to the next round the other ALDS matchup saw the uh, Boston Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays do battle uh, Tampa won the first game uh, of that series by the final of five to nothing they won game or excuse me they lost game two in blowout fashion to the Red Sox by the final of 14 to six and uh, basically it yeah make sure I'm reading this right uh yeah, okay. Tampa Bay took the first game five to nothing. Uh, Boston took game two, fourteen to six. Uh, the Red Sox would then basically go on to win the final three games of that series, uh, winning game three, six to four, and the final game, uh, game four, uh, by the final of six to five to advance uh, in the NL, uh, the AL side of things in the playoffs. Over on the NLDS side of things, you saw the uh, Atlanta Braves battle the Milwaukee Brewers uh, in that matchup. Uh, the Brewers taking game one uh, by the final of two to one. Atlanta won game two by the final of three to nothing. Uh, that would be the same score as well for game three as Atlanta won that three to nothing. And of course, the clinching winning game for Atlanta came in game four as they beat uh, Milwaukee in that contest by the final of five to four. The other NLD matchup, NLDS matchup, something we never thought we would have seen years ago until obviously the whole changing of the whole one game play in crap happened and that was a matchup between division rivals in the NLDS as the Giants and the Dodgers locked horns in that matchup the Giants took game one by the final of four to nothing uh were then blown out by the Dodgers in game two nine to two uh they took game three by the final of one to nothing the Dodgers took game four by the final of seven to two and ultimately would take the fifth and decisive game in that series over the Giants by the final of two to one the ALCS would of course see the uh, Boston Red Sox and the Houston Astros go at it. Game one would be taken by Houston by the final of five to four. Boston would take game two by the final of nine to five. Uh, they would also win game three in blowout fashion by the final of 12 to three. Uh, but basically from that point on, it seemed like they probably shot off their whole load uh, in game three because from game four on, it was nothing but Houston Astros W's as Houston won game four, nine to two, won game five, nine to one, and took the clinching game six by the final of five to nothing. Over on the NLCS side of things, you had the Dodgers and the Braves. Braves uh, locking up in that one. Atlanta took game one by the final of three to two. They also won game two by the final of five to four. LA took game three by the final of six to five. Uh, Atlanta took game four by the final of nine to two. Uh, LA would blow out uh, Atlanta in game five by the final of 11 to two, but uh, were not able to uh, 
hoist up a W in Game 6 to force a Game 7 as the Braves would take the decisive sixth game by the final of 4-2. to two. And that, of course, would set up things for an Atlanta Braves-Houston Astros World Series in 2021. Atlanta took Game 1 uh, in this series by the final of 6-2. to two. Houston would win Game 2 by the final of 7-2. to two. Atlanta would win Game 3, 2 to nothing. They would also win Game 4, 3 to nothing. Uh, Houston would uh, win uh, 9 to 5 in game 5 uh, but ultimately get blown uh, blown out and shut out in the 6th and final game of the series as Atlanta wins 7 to nothing and of course wins the 2021 World Series four games to two and uh that concludes real quickly to some extent uh how things went down in 2021 around major league baseball um i had also planned to give you all an update on what the final standings were for our minor league teams but um i unfortunately ran out of time to checking in on that stuff uh before i had to get situated in prep time for this show and had a few other things i had to run around and do before the broadcast so uh Add that to the list of things that uh, will be discussed as well on uh, show number 299 in a couple of weeks. So minor league uh, standings for the A's minor league teams will come at you um, on January the 6th, along with uh, the breakdown of the final EIR and uh, uh, AASCG-related news as well. Um, On that note, hey, want to remind you all one more time, uh, and in fact, this is the final time of the night that I will be reminding y'all that uh, there is a fan question of the night out there. So, hey, if you haven't done so, uh, you better get your butts over to uh, facebook.com slash A's fan radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter right here right now because uh, this is the final break coming at you. So get those fan questions submitted so yours truly can uh, go ahead and let you all know uh, or not let y'all know. So yours truly can read uh, your responses to the fan question of the night at the end, uh, or kind of near the end of the final segment, because obviously I still got to do my final thought before I cut y'all loose uh, for the night. But yeah, facebook.com slash A's fan radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter uh, to submit your response for the fan question, which for this show is, uh, since we talked about it earlier and we all know it's coming at some point during the morning tomorrow, Y'all's thoughts on the 3,500-page-long final version of the uh, environmental impact report for Howard Terminal smacking us all upside the head uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, I am still uh, waiting to find out, by the way, from my contacts at the Oakland A's. Yes, I do still have contacts with the A's even after all the crap that went down this year, uh, crazily enough. But, hey, what else do you expect? But uh, they are looking into seeing if I can possibly uh, get hold of a physical copy of the EIR, but it ultimately depends on if they made any or if obviously with COVID still going on they may have just decided to do uh, everything all digital again like they uh, did with the previous uh, draft version of the EIR so yeah your thoughts on the final version of the EIR being released again facebook.com slash A's fan radio or at A's underscore fan underscore radio over on Twitter to submit those and I will be reading those responses for y'all along with one other final tidbit of info that I'll be throwing all at y'all. We come back here for the final segment of tonight's edition of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland athletics. Don't go anywhere. Final segment of show number 298 of A's fan radio dedicated to Ray Fossey and Mike Neesmith of the monkeys will be coming at you here in a bit. Could hide neath the wings of the bluebird as she sang. Hey, I did tell y'all that there was going to be another monkey song on this show before the uh, the night was over with, and now y'all know what my favorite monkey song is, if uh, y'all were wondering. It's that one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is show number 298 of your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics in this broadcast course, being dedicated to Ray Fossey and Mike Neesmith of the Monkees. It is A's Fan Radio. This is Corporal Oaktown, and it's great to be finally back at y'all after a six-month-plus uh, hiatus, as, of course, uh, yours truly and my family are still kind of battling uh, the fallout and some legal stuff in regards to the uh, murder of my aunt from last July. But, hey, glad to be back at you. Uh, hopefully we get to come at you a little bit periodically more than I'm expecting. But, again, a lot of that hinges on basically what happens with the uh, the lockout at this point, uh, which 
kind of makes me happy that obviously that I have another podcast that I can do because obviously if things kind of get hold up with this one, I can at least devote my energy to still honing my craft on that other one. And uh, that was the other piece of uh, news I wanted to share you all uh, before we get on here into the final segment and I share your responses to the fan question of the night and give you all my final thought of the night before we all punch out and do whatever the hell y'all plan on doing um, on Thursday night. In my case, it's going to rest up and hope that this COVID shot doesn't have me feeling all crappy and stuff when I go to see Spider-Man No Way Home uh, tomorrow. And none of y'all better spoil that for me because if y'all spoil them, well, I mean, I shouldn't be getting mad. I have seen some stuff, but there is obviously stuff I am avoiding. If y'all out there spoil things for me, I'm going to turn into Mobus and come and bite your freaking head off for spoiling the movie from me. Um, it's kind of funny. I actually saw a screenshot of, of Mobus from his movie where it kind of actually looks like how I might look as a vampire. So, yeah, don't spoil Spider-Man No Way Home for me or I'm going to come and suck your blood out like Morbus, you bastards. Uh, that other show, of course, uh, some of you might be familiar with it. Some of you may not. Uh, but if you all didn't know, I do a Cal podcast also, and we uh, just brought that back uh, from hiatus as well. Basically, both of my shows took time off uh, because of the stuff that I was dealing with um, the last couple of months. But the uh, the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill did its return broadcast uh, last Saturday. We recorded some of the audio up on Tightwad Hill uh, prior to the USC game, and then I kind of finished off uh, – some extra stuff for it uh, the following day and put that up as a YouTube exclusive. Uh, finally got Tad on the show after uh, the Bear Raid was founded over a year ago and uh, hope to have him uh, for the next edition, which um, as of right now is slated uh, for this Sunday. And uh, that's part of the reason why we're, I'm not uh, doing a Bear Raid segment like I normally do on this portion of the show. That's probably why you're sitting like, what, you're not going to recap the Cal football season? Well, I am. I'm just not going to do it tonight on this show. I'll do it Sunday, uh, this upcoming Sunday, the, uh, what is it, the 18th, I think? No, Sunday's the 19th. Uh, Sunday the 19th, Sunday, December 19th, this upcoming Sunday will be uh, show number 15 of the Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill, and that is where y'all can uh, catch my uh, season in review for Cal football. Um, Hopefully, Taddy will be here. Tad said that he definitely wanted to now get back involved, but uh, we'll see what happens because him and Donnie kind of uh, – Donnie did too much medical research. Taddy had a few too many rum and cokes the last game, and they were supposed to coordinate leaking up and coming over here Saturday uh, on Sunday to do that. So maybe we'll have the full cast here Sunday. Maybe it'll just be me and Donnie, or maybe Donnie for some reason has something come up, and maybe I'll be doing the Bear Raid solo on Sunday. But the Bear Raid will be coming at you this Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, right here on twitch.tv, uh, twitch.tv slash A's Fan Radio. And, uh, of course, the Bear Raid is brought to you by the greatest place on planet Earth to watch Cal football for free since 1923, the world-famous Tightwad Hill, which, again, thank you to those uh, 23 individuals that re-elected me as uh, the 30th governor of Tightwad Hill. Three more years of Keith! Yay! Uh, I'll be up for re-election in 2024, and if you're wondering why three years, it's because we try to keep it in line with the presidential election, and we decided not to count last year because of COVID and the fact the fans weren't supposed to be up there even though some were. Uh, but anyway, for more of you out there uh, that are Cal, that are A's fans that also happen to be Cal fans, or if you just happen to be a Cal fan that's just stuck watching A's fan radio right now with your A's buddy, but you want to check out me and my boys talking about the California Golden Bears and not just football, but some of the other athletic programs up at UC Berkeley as well, uh, you can check out the Bear Raid again this upcoming Sunday uh, at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on twitch.tv slash A's fan radio. Uh, you can catch all the past editions of the Bear Raid over on Ace Fan Radio's YouTube channel. I actually have a dedicated playlist over there on AFR's YouTube channel that has uh, basically every episode of, of the Bear Raid on there. So you can watch every episode all the way uh, up back to the first one we did last December, all the way up to uh, the most recent one that uh, technically, even though it was recorded on December the 4th, it aired officially on uh, December the 5th. So yeah. Basically, uh, obviously, again, same thing happened with them, with that show that happened with this one. We kind of went into hibernation uh, in May. But uh, Bear Raid's back. We're back. So uh, definitely, if you haven't had a chance to check out the Bear Raid, uh, definitely kind of a different twist of pace and, you know, a little bit different from maybe what you all are used to hearing uh, here on the sh on A's Fan Radio because you're so used to just hearing us talk about the A's and other stuff Where versus on this other show. It's straight-up dedicated Cal Athletic coverage, baby. So, again, you haven't had a chance to hear it? Hey, give it one listen at least. You know, you like it, great. If not, oh, well, 
tell your cow friend buddies about it. The Bear Raid presented by Tightwad Hill. For more info on that, you can visit Facebook.com slash Tightwad Hill official. You can follow the action and madness over on Twitter at Tightwad Hill 23. Uh, information and just a little gist about the history of the Bear Raid uh, is available on A's Fan Radio's website. Uh, made a page for it over there until we're able to get an actual official Tightwad Hill website uh, dedicated and up again. Uh, Bear Raid's broadcast is mentioned, uh, broadcast here on A's Fan Radio's Twitch channel, so same channel that you're looking at right now is where you can catch this show uh, come Sunday. And uh, just like our past shows, you can catch all the uh, past editions of the Bear Raid over on YouTube. Um, with that note, let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see how many of y'all uh, responded to the uh, fan question of the night uh, for this edition of the show. Uh, of course, as always, we try to... Uh, get a fan question up before every edition of the show there's sometimes when we don't obviously uh you know was really kind of lenient on if i was going to even throw one out there tonight uh but figured what the hell may as well since we hadn't done a show in a hot while and uh we're going to go ahead and find out here right now how many of y'all responded to the fan question of the night and if you know there's only one response. I'm not going to really get too upset about it. You know, I should have remembered, obviously, to post it earlier in the day because I remember that was one thing I was noticing that maybe I should start posting the questions earlier in the day uh, to get a response. But, hey, we've been gone for six months, so and looking at things, there is only one response tonight. You know, hey, it, it is what it is. It's fully understandable that, you know, maybe only one of you had the time to get on there and you just wanted to listen to things with the show tonight. But there was one response to the fan question tonight, which, again, uh, was we wanted to hear your thoughts thoughts on the final EIR for the Howard Terminal project being released tomorrow. Our one response came from Stephen Salas at S. Cruz 2002 over on Twitter, and he uh, responded with, someone in the SF media has already written a story saying why the EIR makes the HD ballpark impossible. They just need to find a couple facts to fill in the blanks. Uh, not, not surprised if uh, the, the usual suspects uh, over there in the SF media, and y'all know who I'm talking about. I'm not even going to bother naming uh, who he, she, they are. Y'all know who the usual suspects are at this point that uh, normally always chime in on that. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised that you're going to have, obviously, individuals in the SF media try to stir the pot and try to say that, oh, this isn't going to work, and they're going to probably sit there and beat the dead horse that's the Coliseum site again like they so, so those individuals have. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're past that point. And just if, if they can't understand that it's basically Howard Terminal or the team's bouncing for Vegas at this point, then I don't know what else to tell y'all, you know, other than for the fact that y'all know who those individuals are. Stop following them. Stop spreading their stuff because all they're doing is just contributing to the uh, – uh, contributing to the continuous spread of, inf of misinformation that – gets thrown out there and uh it, it, some of you out there need to do a better job of uh policing some of the quote-unquote fans on on facebook man because i just I, i'm noticing a lot of stupidity from people that i think are either really just trolls or just straight up imbeciles posing as a's fans in some of the a's facebook's on groups on there man y'all gotta do something about that because there's a lot of knuckleheads on there spreading misinformation and bullshit in all those groups as well and y'all wonder why i don't post in the groups that much anymore outside of the share the recording links for the show broadcast at this point in time now uh so yeah thank you to uh steven who was our lone response on the uh the fan question of the night uh again is what it is obviously i got to remember now when we kind of get back into the groove of uh doing things on this show a little bit more regularly that uh, maybe I need to start posting the question uh, earlier in the day. So, yeah, as always, keep your eyes open for a fan question to go out at some point in the day. We obviously also usually retweet out the link to that fan question uh, five minutes after the show broadcast starts. So uh, who knows what it's going to be next time? Uh, probably going to be related to Howard Terminal, again, given that that's going to be the talk of the or main subject of topic on the next show broadcast. Uh, or maybe I'll just forego a fan question and just, use that as an opportunity for y'all to just submit any questions you have about the ERR. Uh, we'll get that figured out in a couple of weeks, I guess, in that regard. As always, ladies and gentlemen, for more information on your number one source for everything and anything on your Oakland Athletics, be sure to check us out at A'sFanRadio.com. Like us over on Facebook at Facebook.com slash A'sFanRadio. Follow us on Twitter at A's underscore fan underscore radio. You can catch uh, past recordings of the show and more over on our YouTube channel, which uh, you see the link for 
uh, right there. Uh, if some of y'all could hurry up and get us to a thousand followers or more, I could actually change it to youtube.com slash channel slash A's fan radio. Uh, but yeah, we need to get to a certain number threshold before we can uh, pull that off. So yeah, that's the uh, URL for our YouTube channel uh, for the time being until we obviously meet that uh, number threshold. And of course, our next show broadcast will be uh, show number 299, which will smack you all upside the heads uh, a little over a week into the new year, as that broadcast will go down on January the 6th, 2002, at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here from Dub6 Studios on twitch.tv slash A's Fan Radio. On that note, it's finally time for yours truly's final thought of the night. Man, I actually thought that uh, one other tidbit of news that I saw come across uh, my social media feed timeline today was going to be the biggest piece of news today. And that was ultimately before the Howard Terminal stuff uh, ended up dropping about half hour to an hour later. But uh, what I initially thought was going to be, at least in my regard, uh, the biggest piece of news today is the fact that a comic book crossover uh, a crossover that some out there have wanted for years and some out there may have never wanted but are realizing holy crap this is a crossover that I didn't realize that I actually wanted uh, is about to go down next year and uh, that crossover in case you didn't see the news um, is going to involve um, six teenagers that run around in ninja suits and have robotic dinosaurs uh, And they are going to basically end up fighting the greatest movie monster of all time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, next year uh, in 2022, it's been authorized as a crossover piece by Toho uh, with IWD. Uh, We're going to see the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers fight Godzilla in a five-part comic book arc uh, next year. Pretty sure some of y'all over the years have seen various people do uh, fan work of Godzilla fighting the Dragon Zord. I've even seen some out there where basically they've had the Dragon Zord uh, fight against Mecha Godzilla. It's always been kind of rumored to some extent that Mecha Godzilla actually was the inspiration uh, for the Dragon Zord. But um, yeah, it, th- there's kind of been hints out there of people wanting to see a crossover like this go down, and. Uh, Hey, it's one that I definitely look forward to and have wanted to see. And it was funny out there reading some reactions from people out there. Like I said, the one reaction that had me chuckling was the one dude that said, this is the crossover. I just realized that, you know, basically, yeah, what was it he said? This is a crossover I didn't realize I wanted, but I do want it. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be real interesting to see. And basically the whole plot of this is Rita Repulse uh, wants to transport herself to a or a universe that doesn't have Power Rangers in it. And she's able to do that. Uh, the only problem is, is the universe that she transfers herself to is filled with aliens, kaiju, and, of course, the King of the Monsters. And in typical Power Ranger fashion, the Power Rangers end up following her and just who, who knows all what all hell is going to break loose. And I'm going to be really disappointed if I don't see Godzilla and the Dragon Zord go at it. And uh, not going to lie, even though obviously I grew up a big fan of the Power Rangers, and it will be the OG Power Rangers from the 90s that they're using as the basis for this uh, comic book, for those of you who are wondering. And you should have gotten that hit when I mentioned the Dragon Sword, by the way. So if you didn't, now you know. Uh, I will be really disappointed if Godzilla does not destroy the Dragon Sword. So, yeah, got that to look forward to. In 2022, we will see a comic book. Uh, go down in which the Power Rangers fight Godzilla. And, of course, the comic book's footedly called Godzilla versus the Power Rangers. So, yep, that's one of um, who knows how many other crazy things we have to look forward to uh, in 2022. Obviously, got a whole slate of uh, Phase 4 Marvel movies to look forward to as well. But uh, it will be real nice to kick off the year uh, with a uh, a comic book featuring uh, my favorite comic book monster uh, battling it out, of course, with the... Uh, the group of, you know, kids that had Super Ninja abilities, basically, that I watched uh, growing up. On behalf of the boss man and everybody else out there that's been involved with AFR over the years, this is Corporal Oaktown. Thank you all again for bearing with us uh, for the last uh, couple months while we had been off the air. And uh, hopefully that's not going to be the case again here. But, you know, hey, 
we all know that life sometimes randomly throws crap at us that we're not always prepared for. So you never know what would happen, uh, what might happen at this point. But uh, let's just hope that obviously the only reason why we aren't able to do stuff like we normally do here in the off season and in the coming months is due, of course, to this damn lockout going down. Y'all take care, be safe, and enjoy the rest of your Thursday night. The views and opinions of our cast, our guests, and our listeners are in no way, shape, or form affiliated with the Oakland Athletics or Major League Baseball. Whew! God, it's great to be back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again uh, for bearing with us being as gone as long as we were. And look forward to uh, coming back at you. And, uh, again, be sure to also uh, check out my Cal podcast, too, if you haven't had a chance to, uh, to see that as well. That, of course, will be hitting you all upside the head here on twitch.tv slash A's Fan Radio uh, this Sunday at 3 p.m. Otherwise, of course, we will see you right back here. Same time, same Twitch channel on January the 6th when we break down the final version of the Howard Terminal EIR and more on show number 299. Until January the 6th, y'all take care. Don't do anything stupid. Wrap it before you tap it. Don't drink and drive. All that same old crap I used to get told uh, at every safety brief when I was in the Marine Corps because, yeah, we want to have y'all right back here when we do all that and more on January the 6th. Take care. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. See you in 2022, ladies and gentlemen. And until then, good night, Oakland and beyond. And as always, be sure to stay Oakland, my friends. It's a celebration.